How to cope with a divorce. Hi everyone, I'm Apollonia Ponti. I'm your dating and relationship coach, founder of ApolloniaPonti.com, and I'm joined by one of our other wonderful coaches, Cynthia. Thanks for joining me, Cynthia. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here today and to go over a, a subject that is very close to my heart yeah. um, because, you know, I've been through one mm -hmm. and I wanted to explain step by step kind of like what we're going through and dealing with a bunch of emotions coming all at once is completely normal and how to learn how to cope with them. It's very important. Yeah. Exactly. And we're going to share some things because we know a lot of our viewers also either have gone through a divorce or are going through a divorce. And we wanted to give you some instrumental tools that you can bring home, um, you can do, and you can um, perform and just really um, feel like you're supported as well because, it, of course, it is a hard time to go through that. And obviously, you're not alone. A lot of people do go through that. And so this is something that um, not only does Cynthia specialize in marriages and divorces and things like that within her coaching, um, but that's why I wanted to bring her on today's video and channel. This is actually one of her first videos that she's doing on this web on YouTube, so I'm excited. <laughs> I am too. Can you tell? <laughs> Oh, so, so let's get into it. So how is like one way that you can, um, let's start off with like probably the emotions that they go through and then probably how to start coping with those and fo moving forward. So like you said from the beginning, like it is one of the hardest things to go through in life. Um, mostly because I come from a very conservative family. Um, I'm from Peru originally, very conservative, close, uh, family members. And, um, you know, you have this concept of marriage supposed to last forever. Mm -hmm. And the concept of longevity, longevity mm -hmm. it's very to our core, right? Mm -hmm. It's very close to our heart. And when that it's broken, there's a trauma that occurs inside of us and it's completely normal. So I'll explain a little bit what I went through so you can understand if you're going through a divorce or a very hard breakup, that is completely normal feeling what you're feeling right now. Um, the first feeling was a shock um, because I didn't expect it at all. And with that came extreme sadness. It is something that I did wrong. What is wrong with me? When, why are we where we are today? And then, of course, after I've learned how to cope with that sadness, it came, became anger. Mm -hmm. I was angry at myself, it's something that I did wrong. And I, I was honestly very hard on myself and blame myself for, blame myself for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the breaking a marriage is, 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 especially when you have kids involved. I have two boys, nine and six years old. Um, when it involves other people that they're they don't have a choice and you have to make that choice for them, it becomes even harder mm -hmm. to cope with it. Uh, because now you have two kids there and you start thinking, oh my God, they're gonna be going to two houses. We're gonna have to, how is this gonna work? And your, your mind starts like flying all over the place and thinking about what is going to be my kid's future if this were to happen. Um, so we usually forget about coping with the feeling that we're having right in there that is the anger towards ourselves because we're angry towards the other person for doing, why are they doing what they're doing, right? Um, then after I went through my anger stage, um, then I started focusing on, instead of what was wrong with the other person, what can I do better to help my kids hope with this change? Right, so that became, um, I changed my mindset and I'll say that was my first step towards change, mm -hmm. which is um, why is divorce so bad for me? Why am I thinking this divorce is the end of everything? Why am I so, why do I feel so defeated, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that was a very mind blowing moment for me where I was like, was I happy ever in this marriage? Mm -hmm. Was I myself when I was with this person? Did I grow? Did this relationship allow me to grow mm -hmm. into something that I wanted to be? And then I started answering through journaling um, all of these questions and I realized um, 
this was not a relationship that allowed me to grow and be the best version of myself. Instead, I became the wife, the mom. But I slowly, and this happens a lot with motherhood also, with parenting, um, you kind of forget about yourself because you're taking care of so many other people, mm -hmm. right? So um, I, I started focusing on like, what could I do better to start focusing on myself to be a better parent to my kids so they wouldn't feel as much this, um, this shocking change for us, right? Because if my kids start seeing that this divorce is actually something that I needed to bloom, mm -hmm. to show happiness, that my true self, then they'll be more likely to accept a decision that was made for them because they didn't make that decision, right? We adults make mistakes and sometimes we have to involve the kids to make decisions for them, which doesn't sound very fair, but if you help them cope and understand why we do what we do, then it becomes more of like, okay, my mom seems happy. My mom's is like, I, be, I, I feel like my, I've had my dad more than I've ever had them before. And it becomes more of like a positive thing for them, right? It's how you, um, you show them your, your, and you don't have to fake it. Of course, there are moments that my kids saw me crying mm -hmm. um, and I feel, felt guilty for it. There are moments that I would just stare at the ceiling and I will like be drinking my wine and sometimes not even pay attention that I went through the whole bottle <laughs> and my kids were there and, and I will feel guilty about that um, afterwards. But then I'll, I had to explain, they're human beings, they don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I had to explain to them, you know, um, mommy's going through a tough time. We're allowed to feel deeply sad because, um, you know what, your dad is very important to me. He's a wonderful father. He gave me my two biggest blessings in life. And I'm thankful that I had him in my life, but I'm on the stage that um, we both decided to bloom in our own worlds, still having you two um, be raised in a very healthy environment. Mm -hmm. Because what we had wasn't healthy. It was, it became toxic for both of us. But I didn't see it because I was too busy focusing on the kids. So every time I will see a um, red cloud or a problem, I would just choose to ignore it, mm -hmm. right? So if you're feeling right now that you're feeling sad or angry or whatever emotions you're going through, just want to let you know that it's completely normal, but it is your choice to have this tragedy because it is a tragedy. I explained it before. It felt like a death of something. Mm -hmm. It was like a death mm -hmm. of a marriage. You're mourning. And, and now you're mourning and you treat it mm -hmm. like you are uh, more in a loss. Mm -hmm. So treat it like that. And, and how be do, okay with those emotions. And be okay with those yeah. emotions because you have to sit with them. Mm -hmm. And it might take time. It took me a long time to sit with each one of them to then understand myself and why things were happening in my life and how I can make it or turn it into a positive thing instead of like what, what I was in, in mm -hmm. the negative stage. Yeah. Um, so after you decide to make a choice, right? Either when we go through trauma, when we go through tragedies, we, we have a choice whether we let it destroy us mm -hmm. or we let, a, we let it um, grow in us and mm -hmm. make us a better person or, or to others, to friends, to the next relationship, to our kids, to everything. So we make that choice. How do we make that choice? I know it, sounds, mm -hmm. it is. I, I know it sounds crazy, but it, it is a change of a mindset. Yeah, for sure. I talk about that all the time. You have to it, be open to changing your mindset. You have to want to change your mindset. Exactly. Instead of like, because I went through that big team stage, mm -hmm. a stage where it's like, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. Why my kids? Taking accountability, forgiving, letting go of shame around something letting go of judgment around something. Yeah. yeah. So I think with coping with the divorce, it's really important that not only like Cynthia was saying, you reflect on things that are happening and you give us some advice. If you do have kids, um, what to, how to probably communicate and interact, but not only that, 
reflecting, journaling. I'm a big person about writing things on paper because I know how the brain works. You write it on paper and then you read it back. Mm -hmm. It's two different ways. Like it's two different learning processes that are happening there. And so the mind starts to think differently when it reads it back as well than you writing it. Mm -hmm. um, another thing too is the mindset. Like she was saying, there's a different stage that you have to take. You have to go through the motions. You're allowed to have anger. You're allowed to be the victim at a certain point. But in order to change, you have to take responsibility, even if that person did do you wrong, even if that person did do you quote unquote dirty, you attracted that. And so when we can figure out, when we can come out of victim instead of putting judgment on that person, because also when we put judgment on a person, what it does is you're, the only the reason why you're doing that is because you're trying to protect some emotion that you have around it. And it takes, think of it this way, it takes more energy to continue to judge someone because they will continue to go in your thoughts. And then you have to continue to say, no, I don't like them. Oh, they're a piece of, you know what, blah, blah, blah. Then letting go of judgment, being free, forgiving. And then when you think of that person, it's not there anymore. There's no, there's no energy attached to it because you forgive, you let go, you got out of victim. You worked on why is that emotion bringing that up for me? And so we start to change our mindset when we become um, the leader of our life and we take control of that. And I also think like, being around friends, being around family during this time. And a lot of times when we get in marriages, we lose ourselves. Yeah. So a big part of this process is finding yourself again, finding who you are again, mm -hmm. because the Apollonia that was 10 years ago is not the Apollonia yes. here now, yeah. just yeah. like you, you yeah. know? So you have to find yourself again, mm -hmm. find new hobbies, try new things, do improv classes, do comedy mm -hmm. classes, things that make you so nervous. Read. Yeah. Read. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. Like I do things till this day that make me nervous. I remember I was parasailing with my mom and my sister. And I told them like, I know I'm not going to like this. I feel like I'm not going to like this. And I was like, no, now you have an expectation. You're not going to like it. Let go and have fun. I said, okay. I told myself I'm going to have fun. I went on there. I tried to have fun. And I was like, I'm okay with not liking this. At least I tried it. And I mm -hmm. got myself in my comfort zone. I told them to let me down. They went back up. So mm -hmm. it was like, you know, at least I try things, yeah, you know? Yeah. And that's what I mean is like being okay and being self-aware enough to be like, okay, I'm going to try something, whatever that is that scares me. But if it doesn't work out, it's okay too. It's detachment of trying to seek acceptance that, oh, I'm not scared or, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to make this moment with my sister and mom. And so I'm putting that pressure that I could have done. Mm -hmm. I was just like, nope. I don't like it. That's okay. You guys go ahead and enjoy it. There's no attachment. So I think that's about another part of finding yourself constantly reading self-discovery. Coaching is a big one. I think coaching helps significantly with, I've coached a lot of clients that have gone mm -hmm. through divorce. You have too. And that's like a big, big thing because it gives you that external resource to think outside of the box too, because you have someone that is not in the relationship and you have a bias. You don't have, a, you have somebody that is has an outside opinion, basically, that is not has any emotional attachment to what you're going through. So they can sometimes see things a little bit clearer. Yeah. And also when you talk about forgiveness and you think, oh, I'm going to be in peace with myself when I once I forgive the other person, you can't really forgive the other person if you don't forgive yourself mm -hmm. for making the choice. Because at the end of the day, I made the, the choice to get into a marriage that was, you know, you get with all the illusions that this is going to be the perfect marriage. This is my forever after and my happily ever after and all that. And we come with all these expectations thinking marriage is going to be the fix. Exactly. And then have we ever thought about fixing whatever we need to heal first exactly. before we even get into a marriage? Um, I hear a lot of men telling like, oh, they dream about having their own son, their own daughter, mm -hmm. their kids, right? Having this picture perfect family. And that's amazing. But if you don't heal yourself first for whatever you're going through, sure. then how can you become that protector to a new life that is coming into yours exactly. if you don't know how to even protect yourself? Mm -hmm. So having a kid is such a huge responsibility and before back in the day you know because again i come from a from a very small um old-fashioned what we call family um so whenever i will hear that people that chose is not uh, chooses not to have a child i mean why would they think that like everybody wants to have one but but now that i understand the responsibility that comes with it it is actually an unselfish act to decide not to have one because you think you still have to heal and that's okay. There's no age appropriate. Oh, 
the woman is 27, the, you're in your early 30s, you're like, you need to like have a kid by now. Who put those rules in our heads? It's society that told us a certain age you should be married, a certain age you should have a kid. You shouldn't have a kid until you are emotionally prepared for it because it is an emotional shock. Um, and it was for me, I never even experienced the, like babysitting. Like my first son was um, my first experience holding a baby, having this, like I, I will tell you like, this baby was brought to me at three in the morning. I was by myself in my room. I'll never forget this moment. And I will look at this little face mm -hmm. and I will cry my eyes out. Wow, now this person is completely mine. And what am I supposed, like it was, it was more, it was Shock. a combination of emotions, but I was scared to mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. And I was 26 at the time. Do I think I was, I was, prepare emotionally to have a child. I don't think now that I look back in my life that it was, but it wouldn't be, be without my kids that I got where I am in life right now. Right, exactly. And that's another thing is yes. like, even though some things are unplanned in life, you have mm -hmm. to be okay with accepting that it wasn't planned mm -hmm. because it also is there to teach you a lesson. Like I'm a big believer there's no mistakes in life. Mm -hmm. There's only lessons. Mm -hmm. So okay. either you want to continue your lessons and grow from them and then new lessons reappear or the same lessons will continue to if you don't grow from your lessons. So I think that's really important. I'm happy that we were able to do this video and how to cope with um, a divorce and um, basically show you that, you know, you're not the only one going through this and that you are supported here. So if you are interested in booking a session with Cynthia, of course, you can go to our private coaching page, um, and go ahead and book her on our private coachings page. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, we'll definitely try our best to get back to you. And as always, um, thanks for being here on this video. Oh, thank you for having <laughs> me. I love it. And then I, you know, um, just wanted to say whatever you're going through right now, um, if you take it as a learning lesson, like Apollonia just said, um, you will look at things differently. Mm -hmm. This is happening to you for a reason. What are you supposed to learn from this? 100%. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Remember, you are always loved. Bye for now.